Hi, I'm Rock, and I'm gonna talk about auditing cross-cultural consistency of human annotated labels for recommendation systems. This is a joint work with UW, Cornell, and Microsoft Xbox. The overall motivation of our project comes from the question, how are massive datasets labeled? The answer is oftentimes with humans. For example, this is a fantastic book introducing the idea of ghost workers who are people working in the background to ensure that the downstream machine learning application can run smoothly by, for example, labeling data. However, when you actually dig into the folks who are working on this, we can notice there are a lot of homogeneous population at places. For instance, if you think about Mechanical Turk, actually the majority of M Turkers are Americans. This could often lead issues downstream when we're thinking about who these products are actually trying to serve. Let's take a look at the Go Emotions dataset as an example. The majority of the ghost workers who are labeling this dataset about emotions are from India. Although their native language is English, their interpretation of some sentiment might be different from those in American English, especially the internet slang. So different cultural contexts may lead to varying interpretations and assign different labels than what might be typically expected. This brings to the question, how can we better understand cultural differences in data annotations? We study this question in collaboration with Xbox, in particular with the Microsoft Gaming for Everyone team, who has a vision to make gaming fun for everyone. They are seeking to have more diverse game experience on their platform and to appeal to a broader set of customers. So discovery is a core scenario of importance and we're creating a new system to help improve discovery experiences they want to ensure it was inclusive and to understand possible areas of bias. Here is a concrete scenario in recommendation system. Let's say you are recommending a video game to a friend. Maybe you have some categories in mind. For example, some games that are replayable or cozy. But perhaps you would also give a more specific recommendation to your friend if you know your friend like petting dogs in games. Broadly speaking, having these label buckets are useful for recommendation system to make personalized recommendations. And also, they are just useful on the website to categorize those games for gamers. So let's say you recommended a game that you think is cozy, but then this raises the question, you might think it's cozy, but is it kind of true globally? Would someone in Japan agree? What about Nigeria? So when you are choosing to label a game, how do you actually account for these biases that occur cross-culturally? Now, in general, stepping back into the broader recommendation pipeline, there are lots of places where biases can creep in. There is the point at which you decide on labels. So how did I even come up with the word cozy? There is a step at which you audit the data annotator for biases. And this is what we're focusing on in this paper. Then there is the extra step of making the ML model, making sure the algorithm or model themselves are unbiased. And finally, we output predictions from the ML model. What we are focusing on this paper is just the second block. So just thinking about auditing data annotation by human labelers for bias. To do this, we ran a large scale survey of over 5,000 gamers at Xbox. Specifically, we recruit individuals from 16 countries and we ran our survey translated into nine different languages. And we asked questions about 11 video games of which they can select a subset of games that they have played. The information we get from the survey is not just the demographic information of these individuals, but how they would assign different labels to each game. So this include things like, do you think this game is cozy? Do you think this game is made for kids? Do you think this game is difficult? So they can check which of these they actually think applies to each game. What we found is a set of differences across labels, as one might expect. For example, this is a chart corresponding to one specific anonymized action game where we ask individual if they think this specific action game is zen or has high replayability. First, let's take a look at the zen line, the red one. We can see for nearly everyone, regardless of gender, age, or country, our estimated probability of them agreeing that this game is zen is roughly zero. This indicates that everyone broadly agree here. But what about the green line? The story here is a little bit different. Concretely, we estimate about 39% chance that a Korean would think this game is highly replayable. Whereas there is a 60% probability that an American would think this game is highly replayable. This means that there is an inconsistency here 
with how gamers from different countries conceptualize the specific label, which is has high replayability. We can define labels like the one in green as inconsistently conceptualized labels. They are highly variable across countries. It also straddles the 50% line with the majority vote. This is in contrast to the consistently conceptualized label, the red Zen line from before. So the crux of our paper examines what might explain the differences by country. And we have two hypotheses. One regards the cultural differences, the other regards the linguistic differences. First, to understand the cultural aspect, we use Hofstede's cultural dimensions, a cultural framework that we draw from the sociology literature that have specific numerical indices attached to each country. The two specific dimensions that we focused on here are uncertainty avoidance and long-term orientation. In particular, there is a lot of overlap with how one might think about these video games labeling and these two dimensions that we chose. What we did was to generate the cultural distance index based on the Hofstede cultural dimension. So on the x-axis, everything on the left will be two similar countries in terms of cultures. Everything on the right is going to be more dissimilar countries by culture. So we can observe for consistently conceptualized labels, these are things like Zen is from examples before, pretty much everyone has the very high and similar y-axis, which is the correlation between our game label annotations. This means that gamers from different countries are actually labeling games quite similarly for those consistently conceptualized labels. But this is very much not the case for inconsistently conceptualized labels. In fact, we do see this negative correlation where countries who are closer in terms of cultural distance index label our games more similarly. For example, Argentina and Mexico are very similar with low cultural distance, and Korea and Nigeria are very dissimilar with a very high cultural distance. What we see here, Argentina and Mexico have high label similarity, but Korea and Nigeria have very low, in fact the lowest label similarity. So that's our first point. We do think there is a cultural aspect. The second aspect has to do with the translational difference. We realize we have a lot of bilingual speakers in our sample. So what we can do is to send out the survey to the country in both English and their native language, and then match those survey respondents and find the causal difference between those translational differences. And it turns out we do see significant differences in our estimates about one third of the time. For instance, for this label, makes me feel amused or laugh we can see pretty drastic difference between English and the native languages. Let's take Germany as an example. The English speaker in Germany are matched to the individual who took the survey in German. They are matched on things like overall gaming experience, frequency of playing games in English, age, gender, and so on. So for a similar population after matching, we see that the sheer who would annotate a game with this label, which is makes me feel amused or laugh, is much higher in English as opposed to German. So we think both of these reasons might play a role, the culture aspect and the linguistic aspect. This leads to the question of what do we do now? Firstly, we should understand both the cultural and linguistic differences, but also it's important to diversify your underlying training data. To further prove this point, we compare a game label prediction model trained on homogeneous US only data and a heterogeneous non US global based training data. We want to know what would happen if the training data is different. Perhaps not surprisingly, we found a much better F1 score for the inconsistently conceptualized labels when we're training the model on the heterogeneous data. So that is the red triangle line, showing much improvement over the blue triangle line. Not only do we see improvement for all countries, but we also see improvement for the US specifically, even if we use US data in the homogeneous setting. So this global ability to have transfer learning definitely benefits as well. And this also benefits out of sample populations. To recap, our paper provides a step-by-step -step framework for practitioners to audit their label annotations for cultural biases and linguistic biases. But we want to emphasize this doesn't get to the crux of understanding humans. For instance, in our cultural analysis, we are relying on a lot of cold hard numbers. But it doesn't get to the question of how do you actually understand what's going on, or understanding the lived experience of your users. So we encourage in-depth study of the broader HCN sociology and gaming literature. We advocate for having more people in the pipeline to build these products who have diverse lived experience. Lastly, we encourage auditing on the broader recommendation pipeline. So not only in the second step of this, 
but throughout the entire pipeline. Thank you so much.